Hi, Kamlesh. Uh, good afternoon to you and thanks a lot for joining us today on Bloomberg Quint. Uh, let me first take your reaction on the RBI policy because uh, uh, I do understand borrowing cost for a company like yours had gone up because of the liquidity crunch that the uh, sector was facing or the, rather the economy was facing in the last two to three quarters. So what is your reaction to 25 bips cut and change in stance? How does it change life for you all? So good afternoon. So talking about the RBI policy, we will wait for the rates to really transmit. And with the liquidity also in surplus in the first week of June, I think we should see sooner than later. And if that happens, we'll definitely be benefited. Okay, but fair. Having said that, uh, having said that, I just like to add that uh, because of the liability uh, raising plans, what we have always and the policy and the execution we do. If you see, even during September to March, from October to March, our cost of fund has not increased substantially because we had upfront liability already tied up. And I must thank my bankers and the lenders uh, for having supported us and not increased the rate which really affects us. So maybe from this quarter, marginally, the rates will increase, but we already had the limit tied up uh, before the LFS crisis, and that played very well for us. Okay, uh, let's hope if the demand gets stimulated with the rate cut that we've seen, which so far was lagging. But uh, tell us, in the current quarter, since last quarter, we did see a good growth in your AUM. How are the disbursements looking like and the cost of borrowing in the current quarter vis-a-vis -vis the last quarter? In terms of disbursement, the way uh, we operate, Q1 is usually a, a low quarter on disbursement. So it is in line with our usual Q1, what we have been uh, disbursing since years. So nothing extraordinary in that on either way, the growth or the downside. So we have maintained uh, the trajectory of 20 to 25% growth, and we see no reason why we should not do in this quarter also. Okay. And, and more precisely in terms of AUM. So for in order to grow our uh, AUM by 25%, we have to grow in disbursement by say around 15 to 17% because of the tenure of the loans. And as far as Q1 is concerned, so far, uh, as I told you, uh, nothing much uh, extraordinary on the either side. Andy, uh, good afternoon. And on the cost of, uh, sorry, and on the, on the other question on the cost of funds, this uh, Q1, as I told you, last year we had already the limits tied up and hence we didn't have much impact on the rates. But this Q1, we might see an impact anywhere between 025 to 0.5%. Yeah, actually, I was going to ask you about that, Mr. Gandhi. Good afternoon. How, how is the liquidity situation looking like? Because uh, the policy today did not speak too much about increasing liquidity in any way. And with Divan Housing doing what it has done yesterday, I would guess that liquidity system-wide to the NBFC space might be a bit of an issue. Okay, now, post, uh, uh, let me share with you some of the, some of our experience with our bankers post IL and FS. Uh, so what has happened that now, bankers have become selective on the sector. The NBFCs, which have been behaving very well, which do not have um, ALM, those who have good track record. And fortunately, we fall within that category of NBFCs where we never had ALM, no fundamental disconnect, having grown in a calibrated manner over all these years. The only thing is that we have to meet them and drive the point home. But at the end of the day, you can raise the funds what is required for this first match. So same is the case in Q1. Uh, we started the year with a thousand crore plus of uh, sanctions on various uh, on the types of limits such as assignment limits and term loan and cash credit that usually constitutes our liability. And Q1 had been fairly comfortable for us and uh, we are working for a few quarters in advance right now. So the banks are, banks are selective. You have to work hard to explain that. But, uh, in the initial stage, they were generalizing the sector as a whole, but slowly that is giving way to being specific on selecting the NBFCs. Mm. Uh, you know, um, Mr. Gandhi, while we've been talking about how the liquidity in the system has come to surplus now in the month of June, and that should augur well in terms of a faster a pace of transmission and a greater amount of transmission of, of the rate cut that uh, has been announced by the RBI. Do you see that happening in a meaningful way? And what happens to your cost of funds now? So just see if uh, our, all our borrowings are linked to the base rate or to NCLR rates, so to say, 
So once that starts reducing, we'll also get that benefit. Difficult for me to predict that when that will really happen. But at least okay. from the today's policy, we can see a positive uh, things going moving in the right direction. Hmm. Uh, on two counts, that uh, the, the governor is well aware about the liability issues in the economy, and a lot of things have been done. And hmm. secondly, uh, our overall understanding that NBFC sector needs to uh, survive, thrive in order for, for an efficient last month delivery of credit, and then support to the NBFC sector in the manner whatever it is needed. I think it's a very encouraging uh, statement from the governor. Okay, uh, so while uh, you know they've already highlighted the transmission of the last 50 basis point cut that they've taken, uh, 21 basis points has been trans uh, transmitted for the new rupee loans. Uh, do you see uh, how much is uh, you know in terms of transmission from the last 50 basis point cut happened for you? The, it, it has not really happened the way it should have happened. Not not the 50 basis point. And as I told you that so we were on uh, on the increment, uh, we were already having the lines of credit with us. So on the contrary, in April and May, as compared to October to March, the the rate at which we have raised, exactly. as compared to that in April and March, we had to uh, pay higher rate because not because of the transmission, but in as you say that majority of the time the liquidity was not in surplus. And secondly, the sector was also under stress. But we see that now onwards, we should see the transmission happening to our sector. Okay, uh, Mr. Gandhi, just one question from my side. Since we've been talking about the auto pack and how uh, the sector has seen its worst slump in the last five years or so, um, how is the ground situation now looking like when it comes to two-wheeler financing or also commercial vehicle financing, which uh, did not grow that much for you also in the last quarter? So from our point of view, the two-wheeler and commercial vehicle constitute 15 percent of our AUM. So we um, bulk of our AUM comes from MSME funding, and uh, it is true that even in that also we saw a lot of uh, downside as far as uh, two-wheelers and commercial vehicle uh, demand traction was concerned, and it still continues. And we hope that by the time we reach the festival season, starting from August, things should look upwards. 